Welcome to You Can Do It. Today we're going to be working on some Mitsu Toyo uh, dial calipers. Um, I needed some urgently. I hadn't got mine with me. I ordered some off the internet second hand because then I know that they're um, generally genuine if they've been used by someone in the business for two or three years. So these have arrived. Um, they've got a bit of a fault on them. So what we're going to do is we're going to dismantle them. We're going to clean them and then we're going to reassemble them and we're going to work out the dreaded preload. So stay with this set of videos. It's three videos to cover the dismantling, the cleaning and the reassembly and preload. So let's get on. That's the model. 505 um, There she is. I've just put that in there just to protect it. Yeah, they're a lo lovely set of calipers. I mean, they're, they're, they're in very, very good condition. I mean, the guy's obviously etched his initials on there, but one thing you might see straight away that the, that the zero is down here. So part of the process of um, servicing this as well, we'll re reset that dial so that so the zero is at the top. It works, it works fine, you know, I cleaned it up fairly quickly when it arrived and it all seemed good, but it's, it's quite funny. Just that the dimension I needed was, um, I needed 47.5 millimeters. And what was really, really strange <laughs> Um, it was when I got to 47.5 on here, this needle kept it kept sticking. It was always sticking. Um, and then the more I sort of checked it, it would stick. It would stick in exactly the same position and also uh, 180 degrees opposite. So I got an idea then that there must be something wrong. There's something in here or it's broken or it's dirty or whatever. So I thought, okay. Go on the internet and have a look. Um, see, there's a nice video, YouTube video. I couldn't really find anything. I mean, there's plenty of videos going um, of other models, but not necessarily what I was looking at. There was one guy who had an older version of this, and he was telling me if I took out that there, which just usually clamps this bezel, uh, if I took that out and then pushed a little paper clip in there, I could reset the, the zero on the gauge. Well, I've tried that and that didn't work. Anyway, so now what we're going to do then, we're going to take all this apart. So the tools I've got is just a little little sort of micro screwdriver with a few different bits in it. I've got a, oh, no, a to an old toothbrush and a set of uh, tweezers. And I've got some, I've got some thinners and a clean lint-free cloth there. So let's get going. So the first thing to do is to take, I and mean, I haven't actually done this before, <laughs> so let's see how we get on. Take this one off here, so undo that. As you can see, the bezel's loose because I've actually I've done a little bit and I backtracked just so that you can see what I've done. So we'll put those up there. The next thing you do, you have to lift this bezel off. Now you can just I actually used my thumbnail and lifted it, and you click it off, and the bezel and the bezel comes off, and you've got the the plastic glass. So if that plastic was scratched, you can just replace that, I presume, if you get the spare part. So we'll put that up there. Move that out of the way. So then that leaves you with this. You've got your needle, be very, very careful with your needle, and you've got this little, you know, little sort of dial card or whatever. Now, what I did gather from looking at other videos is we have to take that needle off. Um, now, I've seen videos where people go, yeah, yeah, put a little bit of, just a little bit of force. So I actually had some mobile phone um, screen clips. I, had, you put, I put two of those under there, try to lift it off. No chance, it bent the, It bent these. So I actually ended up using something a little bit, a little bit more heavy duty, which is I used that under one side and another screwdriver on the other side. And funny enough, you do, if you're very, very gentle and leave her up on it, you can actually leave that off. But I've only just gently pushed that back so I can pop that off. So that then comes off. So there's your needle. But be very careful with that because it's actually got a bit of a curve on it. So don't, don't straighten that out. Then this comes off. Put that up there. Get that out of the way. Nice to be back, guys. Now we've got to this. Now, I couldn't find anywhere on the internet that showed me this this, this, this exact setup. So uh, hopefully this is going to help other people because there ain't one I found that shows you this one. So as you can see, when you go, when you go back and forth on the rack, you can see that those all those wheels are the wheels in there are moving, and I reckon there's some crap in there. 
So we're going to probably do a, a full job on this. We're going to take everything apart, clean it all up, and then put it back together, and hopefully it should be as good as new. Okay, so, right. When you look at this, there's, uh, yeah, you can see the black screws. So I'm going to take the black screws, and I think that that's going to take the whole, oh, yeah, that's a little spring, obviously, that sits underneath that, that plate. So let's take those black ones off here. Those in there. I'll need two hands for that. Let me do that and I'll come back. Okay. I managed to do that. So there are those two screws there. And then that allows this whole thing to come off. Yeah. And there's your, a lot of the mechanism there. It allows that to run freely. Now, to clean those wheels and everything, I reckon I'm going to have to go one step further. And look, you see this. There's two big screws, Phillips screws, and two tiny ones. And I reckon that be very careful. There's that little that's your needle in the middle, which rotates. So don't don't damage that. So I reckon if I take those big ones off, I reckon that whole thing will come out and it won't fall apart into millions of bits because there's springs and all sorts in there. I reckon if I undid those tiny ones, it would. So just undo these bigger ones. Which we'll do that in a minute. You see, there you little rod there. So I'm just gently leave that there. But if you have a look now on here, let's have a look. Look, you can see automatically. Look, look at all that stuff there. So I don't know whether someone's dropped a cup of a cup of coffee on there or something, but that might actually be the culprit as well. You've got a lot of crap in there. So I'm gonna we'll clean that all up. And you see, you've got four screws here which I'm not going to touch because that splits this, that takes this cover off. And this cover has this arm bolted to it. And that is what gives you your measurement here. So I don't want to affect all that because that's all been ground to be perfect. So I'm not going to unscrew that because that's going to then change all the settings. So I'm just going to leave that in situ and um, we'll, we'll clean that up as it, as, as it is. So the next phase is we have to undo these two little screws in here. And I believe that they hold some sort of shim in there. Uh, and this one will have a point on it. This screw will have a point on it. And this one won't. Idea, I've never done this before. So I'm just going to measure how many times I have to unscrew that. So that I screw it up at the same sort of level. The same with that one. So I've got... A another bit for this which is just a flat head which I'll put on now and then I can unscrew that and take those out so let me get on and do that now okay we've got the front one out that was seven complete turns and then that came out there so that gives me a, a rough uh, idea when I put it back put seven turns on it and know that I'm in the roughly the same position so I'll put that one that one in there and I know that's there okay so now I've got the, the back one to yeah, that one was eight turns and this one is flat. This has got this is flat. The front one's got like a little point on it, and this one is totally flat. So when I put that back, I've got to remember to put the pointed one at the front and the flat one at the back. Right, okay. so just so that you can see. But see, look there. There's the the shim is coming out. Because if you if you you need to push something up the back of this, just on the top there. Okay, that's come out further now, but you can see now there's a little groove there, which I can then put that lock, and then I can pull the whole thing out. So that, that's a shim, but that's a shim that's curved. So don't whatever you do, straighten it. It's supposed to be curved. It's supposed to have a bit of a curve on it, because that what gives it the force in the middle. It's very important, and the bit with the line, the bit with that line there, comes out is in the front and that's where the little pin of the grub screw sits in so it makes all sense so that's out okay so now that um, shim is out this is all very yeah this is all loose all right as I said I'm not going to unscrew these because I know what that does that what we're going to do is we're going to clean I'm going to clean all this lot up and then I th and, and these bits, and I think that the problem is actually inside here, which we're going to come to that bit, but that'll be um, once I've got through, once I've done all this, I'll come back to that bit there. 
so bear with me. Right, so to take this off, that hits that stop there, and I think in some models that's like screwed on. I think on this one it's just a piece of plastic, a piece of plastic pushed into there. So I'm going to get a screwdriver under there and try and lever that off. But I will need two hands to do that, so let me get yeah. it. So that pops out, that's just a little plastic thing there. So I'll put that over in that pile there. And actually the way I got that out was I actually just pushed a screwdriver in the in the back of there and popped it out that way. So now, trying to do this one-handed, that I think will just come straight off. Yeah, look at that. It's left us with that. Now, not all of them do this. Um, need to tell you do. But look, there's three screws there. One, two, three, and that holds this rack in here. Now, the only way I would imagine to clean that properly is actually to take that out so that you can put a, a brush. And brush through those um, things because that gets all full of muck and you can't really see it because it's covered with the little thing and then that's that's going to affect everything so we're doing a profit job here so we're going to take that off and we can clean that right okay so now what we're going to do is I'm going to put the Phillips screwdriver there there and there and we'll take that rack off okay these are tiny uh, I've got one out they're not too tight, so that so when you put them back, but they're very very small. I'll put that up in there in our little in there. And I've got one. The last one is here. Yeah. Put that up in there. There we are. So that presumably means when I take oh look, it's fallen out. Lovely. So that's out. So you see now, I can just run a, a like a brush. I've got a, um, I've got a toothbrush. I'm cleaning that. I can rub a toothbrush across those teeth and clean all that out. So we're getting virtually to the stage of, of cleaning everything up. On this, I'll, I'll, un I'll unscrew that and then I'll basically put everything off. I'm gonna and I can clean that up. Okay, come out. You just got your little plastic. I think that sits in there, and there's your screw that goes in there. So I'll put that up there, and then we'll start cleaning, I think.